Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Ray did into the Hall of Famer joins us. Ray, how you been? I'm very well, Steve. How are you? Doing great. So this has been an interesting run because of your, quote, retirement, and now you're back <laughs> doing some stuff. So has this been a season where you've had an opportunity to, quote, enjoy it more because there was a different role in life for you? <laughs> uh, that's a good question, Steve. Yeah, it, it's been different for sure. Uh, yeah, I retired in May uh, and with full intentions of retiring. <laughs> and then, uh, and, then uh, and then the Eagles uh, authored another script here. And, uh, you know, if the Eagles had had a 7-10 and 10 season, um, I would, you know, right now I'd be lying on the couch eating potato chips, watching Law and Order reruns. Uh, but uh, but things uh, but things sort of took a different direction here, and um, and so <laughs> so I'm back in the saddle. I'm not complaining, by the way. It's been uh, it's really been a lot of fun, and uh, and this team has been fun to watch. I mean, the first half of the year, I watched it just like a fan, just sitting on the couch watching the games and enjoying them. And then midway through the season, you know, the TV and radio folks both reached out and said, "Hey, listen, this team's this team's definitely going to the playoffs, so they have a chance to win the whole thing. Would you come back and be part of our postseason coverage?" So, you know, given the given the historic arc of this season, I couldn't very well say no. Of course not, and I, and I understand that completely. In watching it from the couch for the first half of the season, and so forth. Did it give you a perspective just watching from that perspective that actually has made its way into your commentary about the postseason? <laughs> well, the first half of the year, yeah. I mean, well, look, I um, um, any, I don't know if anybody saw the, the, the NFL Films Presents piece they did on me. Um, I did. That aired did. in December. It was, it was uh, awesome. Where they, sort of, where, they, where, they, where they actually came to, my, they actually came to our house <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, and filmed the first game of the season with me actually sitting watching a game for the first time with my son. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, I, anybody that saw that also saw that I, I was watching the game the way, same way I watch it from the press box with my yellow league tablet in my lap, you know, charting every play, writing down, mm -hmm. you know, writing, you know, keeping track of all the third down situations, all the red zone possessions. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't very well break that habit, but, um, but I, I did, you know, I, I was able to kind of watch the game like a fan and, uh, and appreciate it in a different way. And, um, and I, I've really, I have really enjoyed this. I have really enjoyed the season, and I've really come to like this team. Uh, and I like the coach, and I like the quarterback a lot. And I, I find them just a very likable bunch. I really do. I, I didn't look. I didn't expect. You know, I didn't expect them to be here. I didn't expect them to be playing in the big game this year. I mean, I thought they were a good team, and I really thought they were moving in the right direction under Nick Sirianni. Uh, but I, they, they've gotten here a little ahead of schedule. But I've, I have thoroughly enjoyed. I have thoroughly enjoyed watching them, and they are, uh, they're good. I mean, they're 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 really good. They're a, a good, tough, well coached team. That uh, in the playoffs here, I mean, I thought you know the Giants and the 49ers would be a good test for them, uh, and they just crushed those two teams. And so I under I fully understand why they're favored to win again on Sunday. Well, now when I watch them, what I like about them is obviously they can do the complicated, but I think more often than not, they just seem to understand who their best players are, where to put them, and the, and then let them play. I feel like they do simple really well. Yeah, I think that's a real good way of describing it, um, and it's true on both sides of the ball. Um, they don't do a whole lot of fancy stuff. They don't try to trick you. Um, I mean, they are just big, powerful, fast, and physical, uh, and they just and and they just play the game the right way. And if you know, I mean, and when they have hurts, they just don't lose. I mean, the only two, you know, I mean, they lost. They play. They had to play two games with Minshew, and they lost both of those games. Uh, but when they have hurts on the field, I mean, they're he just he's really really good. He's really smart. He knows how to run this offense. Uh, I would not want to be a defensive coordinator uh, trying to stop him because you try and take one thing away, he'll just do the other. You know, you try and take away the RPO stuff. You try and take away the running game. 
okay, that's fine. I mean, he'll just throw the ball to A.J. Brown or Devontae Smith. Uh, you try and take those receivers away, um, and, uh, you know, if you try and play too deep to take away the big play, then they'll just turn that big offensive line loose. They'll control the line of scrimmage, and they'll hit you with the three backs and the RPO. Um, they, are a, they are a very – they are a very sound team and very well coached, and their offensive line is is clearly the best in the NFL. It's the best I've seen in a very long time, right. and they just and they just take control of the game. And you know, I was somebody was asking me the other day. You know, if to complete this sentence, the Eagles will win on Sunday if, and I said very simple, if they don't turn the ball over. Exactly. I, mean, I think that yep. you know, if if they if they don't turn the ball over, they win the game. I don't see any way they lose it. Uh, you know, the the Chiefs' defense is is it's okay. I mean, it's pretty good, uh, but they're not as good in the front seven as the Forty ers were. Uh, and so, you know, I think the Eagles' offensive line will have their way with them in that respect. So, if the Eagles just don't turn the ball over and make mistakes, and with Hurts on the field, they generally don't. Then, you know, I think they I think they fly home with the trophy. Yeah, I, I agree with you about it. if they don't turn the ball over, I don't see any way Kansas City can beat them. I think they've got to help Kansas City out to do that. Hurts and they is, don't do that, is, and they really don't do that very often. They really, no. they really don't. I mean, they, the, the two games, the two games with Minshew, they did, but they're yeah. a different team when they've got Hurts on the field, and he, you know, and he is so smart. Uh, and he is so mature in the way he runs the team. And uh, one of the things that makes him the perfect, the perfect quarterback for this style of offense is he just doesn't care about his own statistics. You know, I mean, he threw for 121 yards against the 49ers, and they still scored 31 points, and he could care less. You know, the game was over, right. and he, I mean, he didn't care that he threw for 121 yards. It didn't matter. I mean, they won the game. Um, that's, you know, he has the perfect mentality uh, for, this, for this team and for this coaching staff. I mean, they, they would go into a game, and they'll, whatever they feel like they have to do to win the game, that's what they're going to do. And the players, are, they are fully on board with that. You have been around a lot of coaches' sons during the course of your uh, career. Jalen Hurts is a coach's son. Does he have all the, the typical trademarks that you would see in a coach's son by the way he carries himself and his attitude about the game? All of them, every one. Um, it is, it's very funny. I mean, I, uh, uh, I think that's a big part of it. I don't, unless people are around real football people, um, I don't know if they can appreciate what that means. I mean, to the average fan, the idea, oh, he's a coach, so no, that's good. But if you're really around football, if you're really in the game, do you understand that really means a lot? If you, if you yeah. grew up in a house where your dad was a high-level coach, be it high school or college, uh, and you're playing football, from the time you walk out the door the first time as an eight-year-old, you're playing. You're approaching the game and playing the game in a totally different way than the other kids because you're bringing it home with you. You know, you're bringing it home with you, and you're you're sitting at the kitchen table with your coach every night. You're not just on the field with him. You're with him at eating your Cheerios in the morning, and you're and he's the guy tucking you in at night. And so it is football 24/7 from the time that you can walk. And that has a way of changing the way you approach the game, uh, and it makes you mature beyond your years. And you see that you see that with Jalen Hurts. What I, I think is very interesting when he talks about his father, and he's been in his interviews. You've seen snippets of his interviews from Arizona, uh, and he's asked about his father a lot. Uh, and he, when he's asked about his father, he refers to him as Coach Hurts. He doesn't refer to he doesn't refer to him as dad. Uh, he doesn't refer to him as pop. When he talks about his father, he says, "Well, I was talking to Coach Hertz the other day," um, and I think that will tell you the depth to which his father has influenced him. I mean, when he looks at him, yeah, he's dad, but but when he talks mm -hmm. about him, he's yeah. the coach, and and that's and that's I think that's one of the reasons why this 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 young man uh, at the age of 24 has just an extraordinary maturity level as a quarterback and a leader of this football team. Every great player I've been around, and now the great players I've been around obviously have been college players who then ascended to the NFL. You've been around NFL players. All the ones I've been around that are great ones, Ray, everyone thinks it just naturally happens. They're the ones that I always felt wanted to be coached. Is that how you've experienced it too? No, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I agree one hundred percent with that. Um, and one of the things, that, and one of the real misconceptions with NFL players is, is people, 
and sometimes the players are guilty of this too, is they feel like when they get to, when they get to the NFL, they don't have to be coached anymore. Oh. I've arrived. I'm here. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I know I needed coaching in high school. You had to teach me how to play the game. And, yeah, I, okay, I, okay, I need a coach, and I need to be taught in college because uh, this is a step up from high school. But, aha, I'm in the NFL now. You know, I'm a professional. I'm getting paid for this. You know, I, the coaching part isn't really that important anymore. You don't have to develop me anymore. I'm here. Um, that is not true. <laughs> that is right. not true. If, if to be a, I mean, you could be a functional NFL player. You can, you can earn a paycheck and hang around for a little while if you have that attitude. But to really have a career, to really be a great player, you have to understand that the learning part of the game um, is just as important to you when you're in the NFL as it was when you were in high school and college, because there's always something to learn. Uh, and the, you know that that elite, elite top of the pen, top of the pyramid group of guys. They totally get that, uh, and that's one of the reasons why they're great, and that's one of the reasons why they play a long time. The other guys, they kind of they kind of come and they go. But the guys who endure and the guys that have great careers are the guys that understand that every day they walk on the field, it's just as important that they keep that they keep an open mind and try and improve whatever they need to improve that day. It's as important when you're in your fifth year of the NFL as when you're in your fifth year of high school or college. Yeah, And I, I saw that with Miles Sanders here. He's now with the Eagles. Yeah. And that point goes to Jalen Hurts, being the son of a coach. He's always understood how critical coaching was to success. And again, I'll tell you one quick story on my end. Bill O'Brien's here at Penn State. We're doing a coach's show on a Thursday night. Fan says, when it comes to, you know, working with quarterbacks, and he said, nah, obviously, you didn't have to do anything with Brady, right? And, <laughs> and, and Bill is sitting next to me. And as you know, Bill is can be emotional. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I just took my left hand and I put it on his wrist like just it's going to be okay here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I turned the question around. I said, hey, when you're around any player, whether it's a great player like Brady or a college quarterback, how important is the relationship and the coaching part of it for each and every one of them? How badly do great ones want to be coached? So, yeah, that calmed it down. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, well, I think that's true. And there was yeah. a game um, – I guess it was two years ago, and it was it was Hertz's second or third start. Uh, he, I mean, they had, they they had brought him in, they had, you know, they had put him in in place of Wentz, and they made it clear he was going to finish out the season. He had a really yeah. good, really really good first game against New Orleans, and then the next mm -hmm. week didn't go so well. Uh, and he made a mistake. He held the ball too long, took a hit, fumbled the ball, and he was coming off the field, and Sirianni Sirianni got in his face. Uh, and the TV cameras saw it and showed it. Uh, and uh, and Hertz didn't even blink. I mean, Hertz stood there, nodded his head, and then walked back to the bench. Uh, and after the after the game in the press conference, somebody brought up that moment. And you know, when, when the coach jumped on you there, uh, how did you feel about that? And Hertz said, you know, I made a mistake. I made a stupid play. I, I held the ball too long, and it cost the team. I turned the ball over. He said, but well, and they said, well, what did you? Because they said, they, you, I saw you said something back to him, uh, and he said, yeah. He said what I said back to him was, that's okay. I want to be coached hard. Uh, and Sirianni talked about it, too. Sirianni said in, in his press conference, he said, Jalen and I have this understanding. He said, you know, Jalen told me, don't be afraid to coach me hard because that's the way my father coached me. And that was the foundation of the relationship. And you look at where the two of them are now, a couple of years later, yeah. playing for a world championship, I'd say it worked. Well, you know what happens when they don't talk to you? That usually means they don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's. I think that is. I think that is spot on, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Ray, enjoy every second of this. Enjoy every second of it, and I know you will. Thanks a lot for the valuable time you gave to us today, and any time we have you on, we appreciate you so much. 
No, that's that's perfectly fine, Steve. I always enjoy joining. You. I got I got to go out now. We're um, some of the people in the neighborhood were getting together, and we're greasing the tele- we're greasing the poles here, uh, just making sure that I don't I don't I don't want to say I don't want to say we're overconfident or anything, but uh, but we we got the uh, the neighborhood watch guys are all together, and we're going out tonight to grease the poles just to be sure we're ready for Sunday night. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Girardi already did that up in Yardley, so we're. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve. Always a Thanks, pleasure. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate it.